bless you and thank you sister michelle for those kind words i'll have your hundred dollar bill ready as soon as I to it. okay i'm sorry i got my my amounts mixed up and um but thank you for the opportunity to speak today and um, i give great honor we have the world's best pastor and first lady don't we let's give them a good hand clap i um i'm truly been stirred this this week and um the Lord gave me a little simple thought. Sister Michelle was was um, talking about a post I'd made. It was in reference to a dream I had. And on a comical side, leading up to this, there was a, an article, and some of you may have seen it, and it was talking about how far we've come with robots. And I, they was talking about how soon you'll be able to build your own date, your own your own spouse. Get to pick the eye color, what color hair they got. And I said, "Wow, that'll that'll take care of the trying to find a date for prom, you know." And um, but I begin to think, you know, how sad that really is to have someone tell you, "I love you," because they were robotic and programmed to do that. How sad it would be to walk down on the beach and hold a cold hand because it was programmed and yet sometimes that's exactly what we become if you will i'll go ahead and dive in um, we'll start with matthew 15 verses 7 and 8 it says ye hypocrites well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips but their heart is far from me Matthew 6 and 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So today I want to talk to you on the simple subject of it's a heart thing and not a head thing. I was awakened um, several nights ago. I had um, went to sleep and I had dreamed that I was at general conference. And I dreamed that come, some guys come to me and said, we need you to teach a class. Brother Dustin, when I dream, I dream big. <laughs> the general conference teaching a class, yes. And the name of the, of the topic that they had picked for my class was simply titled, It's the Heart Thing, Not a Head Thing. I stood there in that classroom and, and it was full. And I began to notice, though, that all the people that were in there just looked tired and looked weary. And so I began my class by saying this. I said, do you know the Bible declares that in the last days there would be a great falling away? And we are there. And the simple reason that we are there is because we are trying to live it within ourselves. Our hearts are far from him. And living it, we can't do it within ourselves. We have to, we have to daily seek Him. And every day, it's not, it's not enough to serve Him with our head knowledge. Head knowledge will always fail. I told them, I said. We can learn all the do's and the don'ts. We can have standards to the T. But if it's not from the heart, if it's not a relationship, the body will always join the heart eventually. The body will always join the heart eventually. It's a heart thing and not a head thing. Then I awakened and God stirred me. I said, Lord, don't ever let me serve you with my head. But Lord, be the heart of me. Lord, be the reason that I wake up in the morning. And Lord, be the, the thing that I thirst and hunger and desire for. You see, my dad always told me, he said, son, he said, find something that you love to do 
and that you're passionate about because he said, if you'll do that for a living, he said, you won't mind getting up in the mornings. And see, it's so much easier to live and to serve when you're in love with the master. If you'll just find what you're, and fall all in love with him. It reminded me there was a lady. She picks up the picture frame and stares at the photograph. It was their wedding day picture. She begins to weep and tears run down her face. But somehow a smile breaks through because she remembers it hadn't always been this way. She remembers the first date, the first time he took her hand. They were both a lot younger back then. He knew her favorite flower, her favorite food, and even her favorite color. She remembered the flowers that he used to send. The little notes he used to leave around the house in spite of the tears. She chuckles a little just thinking of how it used to be. She thinks to herself, I think I remember when it started going wrong. We both got so busy. Life was calling us and the stress of every day found us worn out by night's fall. It was then that the autopilot kicked in. She says, I knew his kisses on the cheek no longer felt warm and passionate. It was more of just a routine. It had become as routine as brushing his teeth. But she says, I never dreamed, though, I would end up here. She recalls him packing his clothes and telling her he was leaving. She said, it was hard to watch him walk out, but the hardest part of all of seeing him walk out the door was the last words as he exited the door. I'm sorry, honey, but my heart's just not in it anymore. See, it started a beautiful thing, and it was full of love and passion. But over time, someone learned how to be married. Not guarding the heart. And it led them away. Because the heart, the body will always join the heart eventually someday. So here she is. She finds herself. She finds herself all alone and weeping and crying over what used to be. Because his heart just wasn't in it anymore. Mechanical relationships will never last. It has to be a heart thing. It can never be a head thing. And I'm reminded of an old song. Sister Michelle, you remember this one? There he was just waiting in our old familiar place. An empty spot beside him where once I used to wait. Just to be filled with strength and wisdom for the battles of each day. And I would have passed him by again, but I clearly heard him say, I miss my time with you. When our hearts leave and we operate on head knowledge, we learn how to serve God. We've just sealed our fate. Have mercy upon us. See, we read about such a king called King Amaziah. It's found in 2 Chronicles 25, 1, through, 1 and 2. Amaziah was 20 and 5 years old. When he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Johanadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. I want to read that again. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. And I looked that up, the perfect heart. Perfect meant here he did not do it with his whole heart. 
It wasn't from the heart. He was operating on head knowledge. He had learned, he had got standards down pat. He had got all the do's and the don'ts right. He knew the law better than anybody. He grew up knowing the law. Oh, Am Amaziah. Amaziah clearly had knowledge, but his heart just wasn't in it. For a while he does the right thing and the Lord blessed him with some victories. But then, then Amaziah's mind starts to join the heart. He starts to let them bring in idols and false gods. Then instead of seeking counsel of the priest and the Lord, from the Lord he seeks direct direction from false worshipers and their idols. Amaziah, where did your love go? Head knowledge is empty. And you're off to a bad, bad start, to a bad, bad place, Amaziah. Yes, you know the law of Moses better than anybody. You were born and raised in it, and it was drilled through you. But somehow, you had a heart issue. You served him with your lips, but your heart was far from him. And now it's led you to somewhere, a bad place that you'll never return from. Because wherever your heart is, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And your body and your mind will join. It will join the heart someday, somewhere. The body will always follow after the heart. Amaziah, you had all the do's and the don'ts down pat. But your heart was far from him. Amaziah, you had the head knowledge, but it just wasn't enough. Head knowledge cannot save us. We have to have a love relationship with the master. Not just the ability to recite the laws. So many times we get into Pentecostalism, we got the standards down pat and and boy, we can dress it to a T like nobody else can. We have all the outer appearances, and we're some of the greatest actors on the stage of this world. But inside our hearts, we're empty and bare because we've learned. We've learned to have church. And it's a sad day that some of our churches have become nothing more than social gatherings. And they become no, no more than country clubs. Because we've got the looks, we've got it all down pat. We know when to say amen and we know exactly when to stand and when to clap. But in our hearts, as soon as we walk out the doors, it's back to business as usual. Because we have all the outside extremities. We know how to play the part. But our hearts are far from Him. And all we offer is empty lip service to Him. And we wonder why we have powerless meetings. We wonder why. Because we become nothing more than a social gathering. For a while, he done all the right things. It's so much easier to live by the law when you're in love with the author of the authority. Amaziah rushed into a disastrous battle. And it was a humiliating defeat. And he was overtaken. The king was captured. He was captured. And 400 cubits of the wall of Jerusalem was broken down. The city, the temple, and the palace were all looted. And hostages were carried to Samaria. This is all considered in the Hebrew Bible as a punishment for Amaziah's turning away from God. His defeat was followed by a conspiracy that took his life. Just like his father, he fell victim to assassins. Apparently, been on killing the one who had brought such a disastrous end to their land. 
Oh, Amaziah, head knowledge isn't good enough if your heart isn't in it. Amaziah seemed to be saying, Lord, I know the right times to say I love you. I know what move to make next. I have all the mechanical kisses and all the good nights I love you. But my heart is far from it. You see, today, Amaziah says, today I'm leaving. God, I know all your laws, but see, my heart's just not in it anymore. Amaziah, can I tell you where you went wrong? It should have been a heart thing and not a head thing. I think one of the greatest stories to show the the heart versus the head knowledge is still found in Luke 10, 38 and 42. I'm sorry, I didn't give y'all all my verses, but I love each and every one of y'all. Let's give our multimedia a good hand clap. They love me in spite of me being me. But Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. This is one of my all-time favorites. Now it came to pass as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him in her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she come help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. And it's a, like I said, it's one of my favorite stories. But can I bring it up to speed? If this story was to happen today, can I tell you how this this story would have probably been written and accounted for? It was early in the morning. The alarm goes off. And she rubs her eyes. And she struggles to wake up because she's so tired from the day before. All her work. And she's almost, her heart was almost faint because she's thinking... Today is going to be a busy day. My house is going to be full of people. Oh, Lord. There will be so much. i got to make sure all the food is ready. i got to make sure all the dishes are ready. i got to make sure that everyone is comfortable. So I better get started. And Martha gets up, but she notices down the hall there's a light on. And she hears singing. And she thinks, Has Mary lost her mind? And then she hears the shower turn off. And she's wondering, what is Mary doing up this early in the morning? Already getting a shower and she's happy and she's singing? She must be a mad woman. There's something wrong. We'll have to have her checked out. She's either hit the bottle or either either she really lost it. So Martha takes off down the hall and she walks into the room and she says, Mary, what in the world is wrong with you? And Mary said, isn't it a beautiful day? She said, just think, today the master's coming. He's going to be in our house of all the houses in this whole world. He's going to be at our house. And Martha, still rubbing her eyes, thinks, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's, 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 that's awesome. But we got a lot to do, Mary, so I need you to chop, chop, okay? And uh, Mary's still singing, getting around, getting dressed. And Mary's, and poor Martha, she's done trying to count how many hamburgers are going to be needed, how many glasses of ice are going to be needed. And she's just going through the whole thing because she wants this to be awesome. She wants it to be beautiful and perfect. So the knock comes at the door. And in walks Jesus. 
Martha looks and she sees all the people and her heart starts beating fast. She's like, oh my Lord. I didn't realize it was going to be this many. Okay. But I got this. I got this. I got this. We, we can do this. I'll just have to, I need some extra ice glasses. Okay. And she goes down the whole list of what's going to be needed. But Mary somehow, she looked at the crowd, but somehow the only person that Mary saw was Jesus. And she thought, the master has come to my house today. She wasn't worried about the multitude and all the people that came. All she knew was today, I'm going to sup and dine with the master. Oh God, I love you, Jesus. He sits down and he begins to teach. And Mary finds herself a good seat right at Jesus' feet. And poor Martha, she's still running around like a chicken with her head cut off. Trying to make sure all the, all the hamburgers have lettuce and tomato. Trying to make sure that the ones that want mayonnaise have it. But... Mary sits there. Mary just sits and listens and takes in every word that the master says. She doesn't even know anything that's going on around her. All she knows is, Master, just speak to me. I want to hear everything you've got to say, Master. And finally, Martha, she's about had enough of it. She said, you know what? I have worked my backside off. And my sister has sat there and done nothing this whole day since Jesus walked in that door. I'm going to fix her. I'm going to go tell Jesus on her. And I'll let Jesus set her straight. So Martha just walks over there and she says, Jesus, do you not care that I, I'm killing myself here? And, and Mary, my sister, sat there and I've done all this work for you to make your visit comfortable, to make it awesome. And all she's done is sit here. And boy, she sits back and folds her arms. And she's waiting on Jesus to really let in on Mary. And tell her how lazy she is and how no good she is. But she gets surprised. Jesus looks right back at her and says, Martha, you got it all messed up. See what the problem between you and Mary is. And I want you to catch this. The problem between you and Mary is, is Mary has a heart vision of who's in the house. You, Martha, you only have a head knowledge of who's in the house. Martha, it would be well with you if you could learn to, to, to get a vision of the heart. A heart vision of who's in this house today. So we come to our church services, we clap our hands, we get, read our little verses, we sing our little songs. And all the time, we make it look good. We make it look really good. But we have the head knowledge of who's in the house. But we don't have the heart vision of who's in the house. We don't have the heart vision of who's in the house. We come to church on Sunday because that's what we're supposed to do. Our worship, just like the man that walked out the door, has become as routine as brushing our teeth. Mm. You see, the day was calling, and Martha, she was answering. But Mary was ignoring the call of all the workload because she was desiring a heart moment. The master spoke and Mary was mesmerized by every word that he spoke and she feasted off of it. Today, do you have the head knowledge of who is in the house? Or are you resting and cherishing a heart moment?
head knowledge and mechanical will fail. A mechanical religion will fail you. It has to be a heart thing and not a head thing. Did you come in with the expectation that the master is going to meet with us? Or was you the Mary? Or was you the Martha, I'm sorry? Did the morning call you and you you stumbled and hit the alarm clock? And we wonder, why does pastor have to start church so early? Can't we have like a noon service or a one o'clock service? I don't really feel good. I don't know if I'm going to make it today. My, my ingrown toenail has been hurting me lately, and so I think I'll just stay home today maybe. Nah, you know what? I tell you, it's Sunday. I, I need to be at church because that's what I do. Okay, let me get dressed. So we hop in our cars, and we find ourselves sitting on the pew. The Bible talks about this. It says we have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. I warn you, wherever your heart is, the rest of you will soon follow. It would be well that we check ourselves and really seek where is our heart at. Where are we laying our treasures up? Oh, we say, oh, we can speak the good, we can speak it good. Oh, I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm laying up treasures in heaven. But our activities and our heart is saying so much different. There's an old song that says, Some have called you Lord, but now they serve another. For two worldly things, their hearts have pledged its loyalty. But as for me, when I made my choice, it was forever. Now as before, but now only more, yours the Lord. Is there a sense of excitement to pray, or is it just a chore? Has it become a task to read his word, or maybe even one day to fast? Is your heart still in it, or are you operating off the mechanical? Have you learned, as the husband had learned, how to be married? Have we learned how to have church? Have we learned to put on our mask? And make the outside look so good. When you awaken, are you Mar Martha or are you Mary? Is the call of the day a list of things that you have to get done? Or is there a sense of sitting at his feet and just hearing what the master has to say? Your greatest expectation when you wake up in the morning. Do you still get excited when he calls your name and wants to dine with you only? Are you Martha saying, God, I'm doing the mechanics of it, but my heart just isn't in it anymore? As you walk out the door a little, day by day, your mind and your body on its way to join the heart. I want to say that again. You slowly walk out the door a little day by day as your mind and your body joins your heart. Lord, like Mary, let me head, be head over heels in love with you. Let me have a heart relationship. Let the world around me melt away till I see nothing but you. Yes, my life has problems. Yes, I've had hills to climb, and yes, I've been in valleys low. 
But if I ever get a hold of the heart condition like Mary had, all the other things, the rest of the crowd melted away, and all she could see was the Master. The dangers of learning... I need to be at church versus the deep-rooted hunger to come to church as we slowly take on the form of godliness but yet deny the power thereof. A head knowledge turns church into a mere social gatherings. They ease our conscience. Well, we went to church, so check that off of our list. Yeah, I love you, Lord. I know the dress codes. I have holiness standard perfect. But where is your heart? It becomes just something we do because it's a habit. It's as routine as brushing our teeth. You see, it was Peter that was asked three times. He was sort of put on the spot. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. And I'd be the first one to confess. What if God asked, what if Jesus asked me that? I wonder how that would go. Danny, do you love me? Or God, you know I love you. Lord, I, I got up early. I was here at I was here at 8 30 this morning. Lord, you know I love you. Danny, do you love me? Lord, I, 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 um, I participate in Bible studies. Lord, I, I, um, Lord I, I witness. Danny, do you love me? Lord, what are you talking about? Do I love you? You know I love you. Look at all the things I do. I don't care about your mechanicisms. I don't care about your outwardness. Feed my sheep. You see, when I was dating Ashley, I would eat at restaurants that I didn't really care about because it was her favorite. When you really, really love somebody, you want to do everything you can to make them happy. Lord, you know I love you. I'll prove it. Feed my sheep. Well, Lord, um, I, I, um, I'm really busy. I'm busy serving you. But how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? How can you serve me when your spirit's empty? Lord, I know all the yeses and the do's and the don'ts. And I profess with my lips that I love you. But our hearts can be so far. Lord, search my heart today. He knows the inward me. I possess all the tools. If you'll notice, we had some people that came here thirsty today. Time after time, they held their cups up. Now, I made a pretty good waiter, right? I had the cups. I had the pitcher. But there was one problem with my show. You see, there's two parts to serving the Lord. You can have all the head knowledge. You can possess all the tools. 
You can have it all just right on the outside. But Sister Michelle and Mama C, I'm sorry I failed you. I had all the right tools. You came thirsty. I had your cups. And to some, it might look like I was really doing my job. But I lacked one thing. I was empty. I had all the outward appearance. But it was to no avail. They'll leave here thirsty. Because all I had was a good show. God forbid that I ever learn how to preach. God forbid that I ever learn how to have church. He stands and he calls from an old familiar place. I miss my time with you. We used to be so in love. But now your kisses are mechanical. Your good night, I love yous are out of habit. And I'll say it again. It's as routine as brushing your teeth. Because you've learned and you have the head knowledge. But your hearts are far from me. I just long one time to sup with you. You see, I had all the outward things, but there's two parts to serving the Lord. The outer me serves, but pastor, it's the inner me, the heart of me, the inner man that fellowships the Lord. It's the inner me that fellowships with the Lord and where I get filled. It's not when I'm serving and got the spotlight. It's in the quiet moments in my house when I'm all alone. And I fall on my knees and I say, God, I need you. I desire to sup with you today because I'm empty. I can teach the Bible studies. I can do all the outer emotions. But God, there's a heart in me that desires to know you. My works will not save me. It's got to be the heart of me. It's got to be everything, God. You've got to be everything. Because my head knowledge will never get me into heaven. My good works can't get me into heaven. He calls out. I'm not worried about what all you did this week. I just simply want to sit at the table with you. I just want to have an intimate time with you. What will I have to offer? How can I truly care? My efforts have no meaning when your presence isn't there. But you'll provide the power if I just take time to pray. I'll stay right here beside you and you'll never have to say, I miss my time with you. Those moments together. I need to be with you each day. And it hurts me when you say that you're simply too busy serving me. But how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? He cries out and he says, There's a longing in my heart wanting more than just a part. You see, 
You're my child. And I sure miss my time with you. But day after day, I tried to prove my love with, exter with the external man. But on the inside, with the heart of me in it, I'm empty and can do no good by, by myself if I have no time alone with him. Everything that I could do within this. There's times we get so tired and we get so weary. Can I tell you that maybe we just need to check. Have we had a heart moment that day? But somehow, Brother Pepper, when I have my heart moments, facing the battle isn't near as bad. But when I try to act my way through, all I do is exhaust my body and my mind. That's why it's so important to have a heart moment. He cries out, Martha, I'm not interested in your serving. I'm just interested in you. I want to fellowship and commune with just me and you. I long to know you. See, I know you're busy serving me, but you're serving me empty. It's mere mechanical, and it will not profit of anything. And I'm going to get out of the way, but I want to read this one last verse. I've heard this verse all my life, but pastor, I've never seen it in this light before until this week. 1 Timothy 4 and 8 simply says this. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. See, I've always heard preachers talk about people that just worship and bodily exercise and they're but could it have been more than just worship that he was talking about? Could he have been saying in this scripture, could he have been saying, all your serving, all your outward appearances will profit little. Because simply this, it has to be a heart thing. It can never be a head thing. If you will stand, I asked Sister Michelle to sing this old chorus. And I ask you to search yourself. Search the heart of you. The old song says, Lord, shine a light from heaven o'er my soul. And if you find anything that should not be, take it out and cleanse me. God, I want to be right. And God, I don't want to just have the head knowledge and the looks. But I want to sit with you today. Lord, let it be a heart thing and not a head thing.
Oh yeah.